behind him. And a tweet like that, message sent and message received by Arkansas. Don't adjust your television sets. Coaches versus cancer tonight in Arkansas with a pink out. And an Arkansas team coming off of a good win Saturday against Ole Miss. That snapped a four-game losing streak. This is a team with one of the top scorers in the SEC with number one, Ricky Council. And they go inside to Mitchell immediately. And Makai Mitchell stepped on the end line in an early Arkansas turnover. For LSU, similar story to Arkansas in many ways. Matt McMahon's team started 12-1 and on the season. They're without their starting point guard, Justice Hill, for another game. An Arkansas native. So they'll run out this five, and it's a bit of a change. He's going a little bit bigger. He wants more juice off the bench later. Yeah, I think you got to battle Arkansas on the glass with that big lineup. LSU, they struggle to score. Their last SEC play at 59 points a game. They cannot turn this thing over and let Arkansas get the game into a track meet. Number 12, K.J. Williams is their leading scorer and an LSU turnover. Guys must be wearing shoes that are size too big. They each step out of bounds in the first possession. Meanwhile, the Razorbacks go with a starting five that looks like this. Nick Smith is in the building tonight, but not in uniform. He's still rehabbing a sore knee, future first-round pick, and Trevin Brazil out with a torn ACL from earlier this season. Yeah, I talked with Nick Smith about 30 minutes before tip. He indicated to me probably a couple of weeks away from being ready for games. Such a huge loss in this Arkansas lineup. He and Brazil are both first-round draft picks. And there's Brazil and Nick Smith. You're talking about two studs not on the floor tonight for Wu Pig. Brazil rocking the platinum haircut. Here's Adam Miller. And he fires and he draws the eye of the crowd here early on. Well, he has one of the better defenders in all of college basketball, Devo Davis, four in pink, assigned to him tonight. It will not be easy for Miller to get clean looks. Four in pink. Did you catch yourself getting that jersey I, I, color I out? I love that, yes. Here's Devo Davis with the baseline jump over the first Devo point of the game. Devo. I just felt like talking to Devo today that he was fired up for this ball game. And that's a kid that last time I was here against Alabama I talked about you guard his will as much as his skill, but playing as well as any guard in this league, Tom. Great defense by Anthony Black, and LSU has to burn a timeout here early on. That man told us we cannot afford the turnovers. They need to get the most out of their offense they can. So far, the Hogs pitching a shutout. Or can they get it going? Well, I do think Arkansas has more offensive punch in their lineup than LSU does. Look at Devo Davis. He made three threes against Ole Miss and played 39 minutes. And Arkansas still has some firepower that I think LSU lacks. Anthony Black whistle for the foul. It's his first. Trying to challenge a shot from Justice Williams, a sophomore from Philadelphia, playing for Matt McMahon, a native of the Secret City, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Took this job after a tremendous run at Murray State. Williams goes to the free throw line, just 61% of the season. McMahon's got a real challenge on his hand. His players know him well. A handful of them played for him at Murray State. But, Jimmy, to keep the energy up for a team that's lost six in a row. Well, he talked to us today about building the foundation. How hard will we compete? How much discipline will we play with? And how much will we talk, which is the foundation of most programs? You think about last year, he was 18-0 in the Ohio Valley Conference. And now struggling to get a second win in the SEC. So an adjustment for him. Coaching wise, but man is he the real deal just a mid-major grinder. There was a phenomenal hire by LSU Here's black trying to get in the paint Off the mark and Pulled down to Derek Fountain a handful of transfers on this LSU roster Fountain played last year at Mississippi State for Ben Howland Williams Got to the rim and KJ Williams their leading scorer finally gets a touch and he's able to draw the foul on Makai Mitchell Well that all started with Justice Williams Attack in the open corner in transition and there's value in a game like this to get the ball on the offensive glass Especially with a weak side rebounder like KJ Williams Fifth year player out of Cleveland, Mississippi played at Murray State where he was the Ohio Valley Conference player of the year 
and he has shown improvement within his game each and every year he's been a college player. What he make one he made one three his freshman year at Murray State, and now he's a kid that can make six or seven threes on you. Look at that numbers, the growth that he's had, the phenomenal college career for this guy. He's option number one for LSU offensively. Miller is option number two, and Trey Hannibal, who is a wrecking ball against Arkansas in the first game, is the third scoring option. Black is able to get in the paint and draws a foul, and that's the second time Anthony Black, a 6'7 freshman out of Duncanville, Texas, is able to draw a foul. That's the first on Justice Williams. Anthony Black will have an interesting one this weekend as part of the SEC Big 12 Challenge. He'll go down to Waco and play against his dad's former team, Ed Terry, a Baylor Hall of Famer in basketball. His mom played soccer there as well. Coming up at 9 Eastern over on ESPN, we'll take you to Syracuse for Armando Baycott, North Carolina, taking on Joe Girard in the Orange. How about Baycott breaking Tyler Hansborough's rebounding record? I didn't think that would ever happen, and how generous Tyler Hansborough was to congratulate him and real recognize real as rebounders in that conversation so important for lsu to keep the ball out of the paint they do not block shot they're last in the league their rim protection is keeping arkansas on the perimeter can they do it we shall see loose ball it was poked away by devo davis and black lost it on his way in it'll go back to lsu Tom, it's an LSU team that has struggled to find their offensive group. And K.J. Williams, 12 in gold, is really an inside-out scorer. Can knock down the three ball, and Arkansas has to stay attached and not let this kid get going. And they've had a couple of different guys on him tonight. Makai Mitchell now. It was Anthony Black earlier. Nice drive, but no finish. Fountain is there, and his is rejected. Good recovery by Mitchell. LSU having some success early getting that ball around the rim, but the shot blocking of Arkansas is double what LSU can put on you. A lot of length on the floor for that team in pink. Williams into Mitchell. Tried to scoop, and it's a second straight block for the 6'9 senior out of Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's just not going to work. That's a lazy release off of a drive with some force. You drive the ball with purpose, and that's just a lazy, quick release that Mitchell just eats up. So now only seven seconds left on the shot clock for LSU. Tigers are 0 for 5 to start this game. And an offensive foul charge at Jalen Reed. When LSU goes straight line out of bounds under, that time they were in a straight line, their first pass is to go score. When they're in a triangle set for Matt McMahon, they just want to get the ball in. But that time with a short clock, you knew the first guy to touch it was going to attack the paint, and a good job by Arkansas to get the feet set. First pass, they're going to attack. Good job by Black to rotate over and give traffic as well. Black with a dish to Mitchell. Hi, Mitchell! Anthony Black, four assists a game. It's fifth best in the SEC. And he runs it as a six-foot, seven-inch point guard. Ricky Council the fourth. Comes up with a strip. And then Fountain gets fouled by Mitchell. And that'll be the second on the Arkansas big. His brother, Mikhail Mitchell, is fighting an injury. They don't have much depth on the interior, but Arkansas off four early. Yeah, Mackay with that middle ball screen. Well, as you could imagine, the Hogs not terribly impressed with that. I spoke today during shoot-around with Devo Davis, and he told me, I couldn't believe it. It was a bad idea for him to put that out there. I think everybody in the country has seen that tweet, so I hope he comes ready. I heard it was his birthday yesterday, too, so it's going to be a big one. I got something coming for him. We all do. Whoa. Here we go. Whoa. It's like it's like NASCAR back in the day, Marty. We're going to put somebody, put somebody into the wall. We're drafted into the front of Daytona, T-Hart. <laughs> they have that tweet Arkansas does posted all throughout their locker room. Adam Miller's a really good kid. He just made an immature decision after the ball game that the lesson learned. And Matt McMahon said, that's not who we are as a program. It's a, a lesson for all of us. We talked about it. We'll grow from it. Matt McMahon trying to change the culture at LSU. He's done a phenomenal job with it. And it's really interesting what 
obviously Matt Man is trying to temper it, and we're going to use it as a teaching lesson. Eric Musselman's using it as a Absolutely. teaching point. Too. We are firing up our entire yeah, team. You, you grab a hold of that thing if you're Arkansas, and you use that extra fuel tonight. So talk to Kam I'll, I'll also talk to Kamani Johnson, fellas, and he said, look, guys, it doesn't mean much to me. But I've been to two Elite Eights while he was sitting home at the crib. Whoa. Our guards, though, they're motivated. <laughs> and they're, they're not being shy, are they? There's Kendall Coleman with the foul. That's his first. By the way, Adam Miller scoreless so far tonight. He's only gotten one shot off to this point. That was an LSU win. You saw the highlights at the top of the show. It was a comeback win. They had to come back from six down about midway through the second half and hit some big free throws in the game late. Two of them coming from Miller himself to secure the win. Ricky counts to the fourth. Yeah, that, that's the shot that Arkansas has to continue to seek. Arkansas was four out of 25 from the three-point line at LSU in the loss. They took the bait, and that counsel that time took up the defensive slack. Continue to make LSU defend you in that paint. Trey Hannibal on the floor now running the point for LSU. Brock Cam Hayes off the bench looking for a little offensive firepower. Hannibal will provide that with a good mid-range jumper. As good of a driver as Hannibal is, can you get him on the same side of the floor as a three-point shooter like K.J. Williams? Defense has to stay attached. Now Hannibal can drive downhill. Black got forced into a, a shot off the front of the rim, chased down by Hannibal, who started his career playing for Frank Martin in South Carolina. Long three way off the mark. Coleman inside. And Arkansas secures the rebound. Coleman just got rushed, had plenty of time to get his feet underneath his shoulders. Evo Davis from the rim. Some days when you talk to a guy and shoot around, you know that he's going to go to another level. And it felt like that today when Marty and I were talking to Devo. He could not wait for the opening tip tonight. Arkansas's defense has been sensational. LSU just won for eight to start this game. Hannibal with the lob. Terrible pass to a wide open Kendall Coleman. Hannibal thought Coleman was going up. Coleman just wanted to get it and then take it from there. Evo Davis has a heart and a toughness and a care factor that's uncommon. That's a good looking stroke. This is a kid that's back to being Devo. Last year at times he got distracted and tried to be something that he wasn't. And he's right back being to that lead dog for Eric Musselman. You said it, Jimmy. When I was chatting with Devo today, we, he actually used that word. He said, it's the dog in me. As yeah. Coach Must says, the things that I do best, you cannot teach. It's always been that way for me. I've always stood out because of that dog in me, always trying to overcome people who don't believe. Monty Johnson with the foul off the ball. Well, this is the heartbeat of Arkansas's program. He flipped this team as a freshman when Arkansas stumbled out of the gate in SEC play, and he flipped the team last year as a sophomore. And dog determined to do the same thing for Arkansas this year. Patrick Beverly-like on this end? Very similar to Patrick Beverly. I've used that comparison time in the last couple of years as a disruptive defender. That's a second on Kendall Coleman on the illegal screen. A bit of housekeeping. Makai Mitchell, we thought, had two. He only has one. He's still on the floor for Arkansas, but Coleman will have to come out. It's well documented what Arkansas has lost without Nick Smith and Trevin Brazil, but it seems like they still have enough offensive weapons on good nights. Absolutely they do. And it's all about their shot selection and shot quality. Don't settle for those early threes. Continue to drive that ball oh. just like that. Absolutely. That dude can score, and he's coming off of the season low two points. So Ricky Council, third in the league at 17 a game, is due for another big one. And I worry about LSU letting go of the defensive rope in this game. I've seen it happen the last couple of ball games. They cannot be offensive sensitive if they're going to hang in this game. Tigers one for eight from the floor. They turned it over five times on this end. Miller with the pump fake. Here's K.J. Williams. They needed that one. But that's good action. Miller on the same side of the floor with K.J. Williams. Debo Davis just making a violent pursuit of the ball with Miller. And K.J. Williams, such a hard guard, Tom, because he can post you, can shoot the mid-range, got the three ball. Tough cover. Council drawing a lot of attention. Here's Walsh. He was a top recruit as well. Shot clock at 10. 
Mitchell lost it, taken away by K.J. Williams. Two sets of eyes on Williams with Council spying on him. And he kicks it out. It's Cam Hayes. And that's short. And Hayes should reverse that ball one more pass. The ball stayed stuck on the same side of the floor as the double team. Speaking of threats on the offensive end, Joseph Pinion wearing number five lurking on the baseline. He's been a great shooter and offensive opportunist for Arkansas. Walsh off the mark. Pinion is a specialist from that corner three ball. If he gets a three off tonight, you're Matt McMahon. You go absolutely nuts. He's a catch and stick guy. Look at Bebo pursue that basketball. Great look on the yep. pass from Block. That's what he does, Tom. Just every area of the game. Things that don't show up and some things that do. But his ability to not give up on pursuing that ball from behind defensively was special. I mean, that was Council with the assist in the open floor. Seven point lead, LSU two for 10 shooting. Now Williams has it blocked by Mitchell and they'll get Mitchell for not giving him room to land and picking up his second person. Yeah, just lost your discipline, did Makai Mitchell. Devo Davis, I believe, is not only the best defender in the SEC. Arkansas teammates have held LSU as 20% shooting from the floor. Tigers, though, four for six from the free throw line, and that's where K.J. Williams awaits. Jimmy, you are so right about him being the emotional leader for the Arkansas Razorbacks. I was just in the huddle as Coach Musselman was going through it with them, and Devo looked at every one of his teammates individually and had tutelage for them. It's obvious he's the undisputed leader of this team, and every one of them respond to those words. It's quite an endorsement for his leadership. Yeah, he's, he's the MIG. He's the most important guy for Arkansas. And, you know, great defenders take it personal if they get clipped, if they get screened. And this kid, he fights, man, with tremendous pride to not get picked off by a screener. More guys need to study his game film. But despite the fact that they've shut down LSU from a jump shooting standpoint, Tigers is four points back. Anthony Black back on the floor, and he draws a foul on the drive. And it's a second now on Justice Williams, who's been playing point guard in absence of Justice Hill, the senior from Little Rock, who started at Murray State and is back home in Baton Rouge on campus and away from the team for the time being. Tom, that's a concerning drive, I think, for Matt McMahon because the ball was never passed and Black was able to get to that SEC logo off the bounce. He told his club today, and rightfully so, this is a load up to the ball game against Arkansas. Heavy in the gaps. Make them settle for three-point jump shots. Anytime you can run offense like Black did and not get the ball reversed and still get to the paint, that's a real concern for LSU early. Black's perfect from the free throw line tonight, 69% on the season. Number one point guard in America coming out of Capel High School in Texas. One of a talented recruiting class hauled in by Eric Musselman. That had Arkansas 11 and 1 to start the season. Hannibal, what a pass to Williams, and it's set the other way by Jalen Graham. Arkansas putting bodies in traffic around K.J. Williams. There's a sweet pass and a good ducking move by Williams. And Graham just erases it. Look at Devo Davis in there fighting as an undersized guard in a mismatch. And just stolen away by Black on the inbounds. Used every bit of his 6'7 length. They've got 6'6 Tyrell Ward matched up with him. Black stops and lets it fly. Got it! Anthony Black for three. You have to take the wide open ones if you're Black. Only four out of 21, 19% in conference play coming in. He told me at shoot around today, I feel like I'm getting better yeah. each and every day. My game's getting ready to take a jump. And there's nothing wrong with his shot. You watch that stroke and really break it down. And everything looks good. Illegal screen, was it not? Absolutely. By the way, you heard the booze on Miller. He still hasn't scored. 
Watch Anthony Black. You're going to go underneath him on this ball screen and dare him to shoot it. And that's a really good release. Elbow on the ball. The follow through is clean. This kid has really blossomed just in the last couple of ball games, averaging 16, seven boards and five assists. And he's all of 6'7. Great leg strength. Can get in the lane, Tom Hart, about any time he wants. That foul is on Fountain. It's the eighth turnover for LSU. Then an offensive foul going the opposite way. Charge to Jalen Graham. LSU just unable to generate points off of their defense. They don't get a lot of steals. Their run game doesn't have a lot of speed to it. So much pressure on LSU to get shots in the half-court offense. Saturday, coming off another loss. They've dropped six in a row. That was at home to Tennessee. Miller still hasn't scored. He was the one that sent out the tweet after the last game. Black comes it up and a nice cut by Jordan Wall. That's the difference in Arkansas and LSU. Arkansas can score off their defense. LSU has not shown that ability so far in conference play. Hogs have doubled up on the Tigers thanks to a 7 nothing run. KJ Williams working on Graham. Left it short. Black to Walsh. And now Walsh goes baseline. Timeout, LSU. It's a 9-0 Arkansas run. They're going to start calling the Hogs here at Bud Walton where Arkansas has made its last four. Off their defense, especially in Bud Walton Reed. The ball stays in the middle as you push it up with counsel. And he's got options on either side. Walsh is the finisher. In the last basket by Walsh, all started, Tom, with a bad closeout by LSU. The defender lunged and got on the high shoulder of Walsh. That was an easy read for him to attack to get to the rim. And the hog call got hot going into break. Razorbacks, nine points off of eight LSU turnovers. Miller started his great Illinois. He was great in the Big Ten as freshman year. Torn ACL before the season last year at LSU. He hasn't refound that stroke. He switched Graham on the road. That's bad offense. Adam Miller bounced the ball. You go back and count, he may have bounced it 10, 11 times into a shot for himself. Here's Black left alone. Good pass. Graham. Wow! Oh, what a finish! This is an unselfish Arkansas team. Now look at the ball movement by Arkansas compared to the ball movement of LSU. Seven assists on ten makes for the Razorbacks. Williams stolen by Black three on one Devo Davis with the left and the kiss and the Razorbacks are rolling now really good gap defense by Arkansas to attack that bounce of KJ Williams I think it was Black just sitting there and he attacked the ball Tom with two hands to get the rip here's Hannibal from the elbow Council another board this is turning into a Razorback blowout. Council behind the back. Graham another flush. Timeout, LSU. What a spurt. That's how this guy's I, wired. I think you just gave him a really good idea. Uh, that's exactly how he's wired. But, man, you took about what he's done with his program, Tom. Year four under Muss, 86 overall wins, the most in the SEC is what he has. And back to back elite eights. I'm, I'm just wondering if the Muss bus has snow tires. <laughs> I would imagine so. Probably a whole bunch of flavors. Uh, that, I'm telling you, I was just in Arkansas's huddle, and Musselman does not want them to let up. He said, give them nothing. Absolutely nothing down here on the defensive end. Do not forget why we're here today. He was as intense as I've ever seen him in that huddle. Graham, nice wraparound pass. Now Davis shares it. 
Well, LSU is getting nothing on the offensive end. They're two out of 16 from the floor, 12%. Arkansas is so big and long. Jimmy, and look out. They're so good Arkansas is playing with high hands on the ball and off the ball. The season turned around last year when they went with more length. They got bigger, especially in the backcourt. The last two seasons, slow starts in conference play. Eric Musselman has found motivation and some lineup tweaks to get them where they need to be. Hannibal can't hit the layup. The follow won't go. And they'll count that one for Trey Hannibal, which is a rare make. What makes Eric Musselman so good at finding the right pieces and parts to turn around in this instance a team that had lost four straight? Tom, I think he's constantly searching. I mean, this is a guy that goes deep in analytics and his, uh, you know, his ability to identify what's wrong and fix it, I think, makes him special. You know, good coaches can see the problem, but great coaches can see the problem and fix it, and he's as good of a fixer as there is in this league. Marty had a great observation when he spent time with Muss after shooter. And he said, you, you strike me as a man who leaves no stone unturned. And Marty, I think that's about as perfect a description as there is. And Devo Davis flashes in his second three. For it to be a snow day, it is really loud in here. I mean, extremely loud in here. I can't hardly hear you, Tommy. But when I talk to Coach Musselman today, it's an interesting observation, too, that the Hawks have only had their full complement of players, their entire roster, once this season. That was December 3rd against San Jose State. And Musselman feels like that was their best unit this year, their best performance of the year. And I asked him about the juggling act this season with all the injuries. He said, I've never seen anything like it. CBA, NBA, nowhere it has been as they nail another three. It is on here at Bud Walton, gentlemen. It is a snow party in Fayetteville. There's no guarantee any of, any of us are going to get home tonight. We might have a slumber party here. Oh, man, this, this building behind the three ball of Anthony Black. What's louder, Bud Walton Arena or Thunder Snow? Yeah, Thunder Snow, but... Twenty-one to two run for Arkansas over the last six plus minutes. They slack off Council. Couldn't make him pay. A little bit of everything tonight with the coaches versus cancer and the pink uniforms for Arkansas. LSU's gold kind of looks like somebody opened a pack of Starbursts and scattered them across the court. You know, we talked Wednesday. Where does LSU's offense come from? If you can't get twelve in gold free for some threes or some posts up, they really struggle. They don't have that break you down guard that can oftentimes do that. Just, and they are continue LSU, Tom, shooting below 50% in the league on layups and dunks. Mm, crazy number. Ricky Councher's got a half dozen. Twenty-five point lead in the first half. Jimmy, it's starting to smell like that LSU Alabama game we had a few weeks ago. Yeah, that foundation that Matt talked to us about. Will we compete? Will we stay disciplined? Will we talk? Well, all three of those boxes right now not being checked by the visitors. That was a 40-point Bama win in Tuscaloosa. Nice spin move by Reed, but Walsh is there to deny it. The swagger that Arkansas is playing with defensively just jumps off the floor. What a run for these Razorbacks. Blacks into double figures already. Council trying to join him. This is his last couple. LSU just three for 22. That's 14% from the field. And you mentioned KJ Williams. He's only taken three shots. And you got to get him the ball. They ran horns into a ball screen. They dope Williams. Got his guy pinned. LSU just unable to, to make a post entry pass. Into the corner. Challenge three is an air ball with the shot clock winding down. Well, Eric must have been told his team after a two and five start in the league every game from here on out is our super bowl and they're playing like it tonight well they have a huge opportunity coming up saturday arkansas does at baylor a game that you're going to be doing and arkansas will have their hands full that baylor team last night those three guards 
Prior Flagler and George were electric to knock off a really good Kansas team. And a huge opportunity for the Razorbacks waiting for them on Saturday in Waco. Yeah, different Baylor team now than the start of Big 12 play. They've turned it around. Shot clock at four, Graham. And one minute to play. It's a 25 point lead for Arkansas. Here's Hayes. Can't hit, Fountain. Gonna call a foul on Walsh. And Eric Musselman is still steaming mad. His team is up 25, and he is still burning red. But Tom, Arkansas 19% from the three point line in their first four SEC games. In their last three, they're 40% as a team. You look at tonight, four out of seven, 57%. So the offense is starting to come. The defense has been pretty solid all year for Arkansas. But it all starts with Debo Davis. Taking the defense to another level tonight. Holding LSU from the floor to just 12% on that three for 25. And Debo Davis was a freshman. He and Jalen Williams turned the year around. Got to an Elite Eight. Devo Davis hit a game winner against ORU in the Sweet 16. And then last year, talked about Arkansas started 0-3, ended up 13-5, and, and Devo Davis went to the bench and became one of the best six men in all of college ball. It's really interesting talking with Musk today. He he truly misses Trevin Brazil and the versatility that he can bring to the lineup because Musk is a master at moving those chess pieces around. Yeah. He's got fewer versatile pieces to move to try and get this team back on track. Yeah, he does. And, you know, but he's, I, I think his time, I know, in the pro level, in terms of how quickly rosters change, kind of gives him an advantage. LSU goes zone. Surprised they didn't go zone earlier in this game. Arkansas shooting 60% in this one, including four of seven from deep. And a four second difference between shot and game clock. Davis I mean, will move now. Sorry, it's a stack 1-1-3 one, one, zone, and the wings come up high. Almost makes it a four-round one. If one on the shot clock is off the back rim, LSU will have a chance at a heave, and Hannibal wouldn't have counted anyway. 38-14 to score at the half. A 23-3 run towards the tail end. Marty's with Muss. Coach, your team played with tremendous urgency and intent. Conference win of the season. Since that victory for the Fighting Tigers, they've lost six in a row. Tom, two team that started the season 12 and one. Tom, I live here. I, I shouldn't be surprised. But I'm a little bit surprised. Blown away by how hard it's snowing outside and how Razorback Nation has showed up loud and proud. It's one of the importance of this team to this state to not be overstated, and they show up tonight. Now, There's a warning. Yep. And, and this has been a point of emphasis for the officials. It goes two ways. You, you will get a warning if you're outside of the box. They don't have to give you a warning to tee you up, though, if you're being unsportsmanlike. That was simply Musselman being outside the box. Yeah, and now the next one will be an automatic tee. What coaches are getting a bad habit of is stepping way out on the floor. We yep. saw John Calipari do it a couple of games ago, Kermit Davis. This arena on Saturday was a picture of him out on the floor. You gotta keep those guys back. I thought Kermit was playing there for it a looked like it didn't far yeah. out he was. Trying to guard Pinion in the corner. Marty, what did you learn at the half? I just talked to Matt McMahon as he exited the LSU locker room and he just looked at me and said, Man, I got nothing for you. We gotta compete. We have to compete every single possession, find a way to score more than three buckets. You just saw Derek Fountain right there working hard to manufacture some points. He said, Look, Arkansas, it, there are monsters in transition. So we have to take it a possession at a time and try to claw our way back into this. It just wasn't our half. And nobody picks up the driver. And a nice finish there by Justice Williams. The three talking points for Matt McMahon in the building blocks for his program. We have to communicate. We have to be disciplined. And we have to compete. First half was one they'd like to forget. Yeah, he doesn't have a Devo Davis. I'm not talking about skill-wise. I'm talking about a guy that holds everybody else accountable. D Davis is a fighter. And Devo Davis will be the first guy to tell Eric, Eric Musselman, get somebody, out, get him out of the game, yeah. coach. And LSU is still trying to find that type of a dog guy. He scored all four points this half, but Williams couldn't finish that one. Here's Davis. 
just a hair behind the cutting Ricky Council. Now, LSU lost to Tennessee Saturday, 77-56. That game was decided in the first half. It was a great effort for Matt McMahon's squad in the second. They played them within a possession or so. And to replicate that, have a good second half here. Miller gets his first bucket of the game here in the second half. LSU has gotten at the rim twice now in the first two minutes of this second half. And with that make, they're now up to shooting 20%. In this game, when it's snowing six inches outside and your shooting percentage is lower than the temperature, mm. that ain't good. Three makes in the first half in 20 minutes, three makes in the first two minutes of the second half. Good job to screen the top of the zone, that side step up screen. Walsh does it again. Well, he's a wide body screener, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, physical screener, tough. Shot clock at three, Council from 16. Got it! Good bounce and good separation by Council. To bounce it, get his shoulder in, a little bit of step back, not enough contact for the offensive charge call. He's got to get going again. Came off a bad performance against Ole Miss on Saturday. Season low, 19 minutes, only two points. And just one for six in that game. They want to fountain to reverse it. He didn't, and there's a lot of frustration in that LSU coaching staff right now. Miller back to back buckets. Miller finally gets one. Davis just a little bit tardy to boost in the shooter. First look that goes down for Miller. The next dead ball, officials will take a look and see if his toe was on the line. Mitchell. KJ Williams got undercut by Anthony Black, who commits his second personal. Watch Devo Davis in hot pursuit of Miller. Did that first look by Council to play with the ball, dance with it, just enough contact to get himself freed up. He's behind the line clearly. It's where you take off from, not where you land. That's what I told the pilot. <laughs> That's important for to you tomorrow. Yep. Just get me close. Scoreless the first half. He's shown a little bit more. Take it to the rack in the second. Black with the rejection, but it came after the foul on the drive. Good job by Miller to attack the switch. And it wasn't a mismatch because Anthony Black at 6-7 can guard any perimeter slot. But Adam Miller just forced himself to that right hand. Interesting last night in that Kansas-Baylor game. I saw earlier today, just kind of reading through analytics, 17 times last night, Baylor got a mismatch and shot the ball against the mismatch. They were so good recognizing the mismatch, attacking the mismatch, and getting shots off. Same thing that Arkansas is going to deal with on Saturday in Waco. Well, the second best team in the country will be on the floor tomorrow night on the SEC Network, Mississippi State. At Coleman, Coleman Coliseum to take out Brandon Miller in Alabama at 9 Eastern on the SEC Network. Alabama's ranked two. I think they're the best team in the country. They have all the pieces. And it's not just the Brandon Miller show. They've got everything. Sears of the transfer portal was a huge pickup at the guard spot. They've got length. I continue to be amazed with Nate Oates, what he's done, taking his team through a very, very difficult situation. I talked with him earlier this week. We don't have one selfish dude on our team. That speaks volumes for how Alabama plays. That's, that, that's going in. Wow, that's, that's uncommon for him to miss an open corner three. Stolen away by Arkansas. They got a four on three. Council with a double clutch. Follows it up. Rebounded by Williams. Chance for Miller to push. And Miller into pinion. Draws the foul and it goes. LSU's been looking for something to get excited about. And Adam Miller has given him eight points in the first four plus minutes of the second half. And Adam Miller has answered the challenge. You look up all of a sudden, there's game pressure. You got to answer for your actions. And, you know, I'm sure Miller learned a tough lesson about the tweet that he sent out. We talked about in the first half. Could not get anything going in the first 20 minutes. The tough guys fight back and Miller has.
There is life for the LSU Tigers. I was just in the huddle, head coach Matt McMahon, extremely composed. Everyone else, there is brand new energy. McMahon looked at his guys and said, it is zero to zero. Let's go win this four minute round of this fight. Very, very energized in that huddle right now. And they've already run, uh, won the first four and a half minute round. They've outscored Arkansas 13 to two here in the second half. Tom, it's a 1-1-3 zone by LSU. That at times, late clock will go man to man. Another turnover. And LSU able to run out and Fountain misses a layup. And the ones you absolutely have to make. You're down on the road, you've got an easy one. And an easy call for the officials on an over the back, over and back, excuse me. And LSU gets another possession. Matt McMahon says, just finish, finish the layup. It's an amazing stat. LSU is still 48% on layups and dunks in seven SEC games. They miss half of their shots that are layup attempts or dunk attempts. That's an incredibly low number. They should be finishing in that 78 to 80 percentile. Miller hounded by Davis in the far corner. Fought right through that screen as he pointed out pregame with Jimmy. Here's Williams with the scoop shot. This isolation basketball by LSU. Arkansas staying attached to guys, so those drive gaps are opening up now for LSU in the second half. Hogs one for five to start the second half. And they've turned it over four times. Make it five turnovers. Awesome. You're starting to see why Eric Musselman kept that energy and intensity in the first half, knowing it was a 40-minute game. I'm not sure what Council saw or what he thought he saw. Big time block by Kamani Johnson. And then an open floor foul as Jalen Reed got his legs tied up. Coming up next, Super Tuesday continues, presented by Progressive. We'll get you to the Dome, Syracuse, playing host uh, Armando Baycott and UNC tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Baycott not only got the Carolina rebounding record, established the Carolina Career double-double record with his 61st. Broke a tie with the great Billy Cunningham. He is such a load, Baycott. And it feels like in Fayetteville, Arkansas, what typically we see at Syracuse outside, right, in late January with the snow coming down. Council, no. And a push-off. Well, I thought that was going to be a push-off on Reed. Instead, they're going to get Anthony Black, and that is his fourth. Nope, sorry. Oh, they didn't stick Reed. That's a third on Reed. Tom, you can lose your momentum, you can lose your juice so quickly in college basketball, not only game to game, but within the game. From one TV timeout to the next, man, the game can flip and change on you. And Musk right now trying to get his team reignited. You'd figure Devo Davis would be the guy to do that. And he's able to draw the foul on Fountain. Second on Derek Fountain. Stays perfectly caffeinated on the sideline. Fantastic pregame meal today, by the way, for Arkansas, which I got to participate in. Fantastic. Hmm. Where was the invite? You guys left and stayed here, and good things happen to those who wait. Nothing wrong with a little ham and tree, ham and cheese. <laughs> Here's Pinion for three. Off the mark. What'd you have? He is so much better from those deep corner threes. We had chicken breasts, hamburger patties, Miller, vegetables. Pasta. I mean, what didn't we have? You know, there's no such thing as a free meal, Jimmy. Council. And I thought that was going to go. He'll go to the free throw line instead. And shoot a couple. Tom, if you're LSU right now, you've got to stay gap heavy with your defense. I know Arkansas has made some threes tonight, four out of nine, but coming in hasn't really been their strength all year. Better the last three games, but Mac McMahon very clear with his guys. This is a heavy gap, low to the ball game. Keep it off the, the rim for LSU. Council sneaking up on double digits as Jordan Walsh, freshman out of DeSoto, Texas, returns. Five-star recruit, McDonald's All-American. Coming for Council, who transferred in from Wichita State. 
He's into double figures now. They got a guy wide open on the back end. It's Hannibal. Nobody found him, but he can't finish. Good recovery by the Arkansas defense. And high off the glass and in from Justice Williams. Another second half basket by LSU going right down the pipe. Arkansas's inability now to guard the ball, starting to be a concern. LSU's made seven out of 11 shots in the second half. Here's Davis. Those inside guys for Arkansas against the zone, they got to show hands the entire time. Doesn't do, do any good to flash without showing hands. Offensive rebound. Mitchell foul. First on Kate J. Williams. All good things must come to an end. We're ready for the 10th and final SEC Big 12 Challenge Saturday. Five of the games on ESPN and the app. We start in Morgantown with 15th ranked Auburn heading in. Bruce Pearl against Bobby Huggins. And then, Jimmy, you'll be in Norman for Alabama and Oklahoma. I'll be in Waco for Arkansas there. And what a finish. Top 10 showdown on Rocky Top between Texas and Tennessee. And then Kansas, which has lost three in a row, goes on the road to Rupp. And Bill Self has never lost four in a row, correct? As the Kansas head coach? As, we as I that. know. Yeah. And Kentucky has a very difficult challenge tonight, right? At Vanderbilt? At Vanderbilt yeah, later tonight that, on the SEC Network. That's not going to be an easy out at all. And some tremendous individual talent coming up this Saturday. For what would be the last SEC Big 12 challenge? It'll turn and be the ACC SEC challenge starting next year. Hannibal tracks it down. They're just bouncing off of dudes, but once again, no luck in the lane for LSU. And LSU just turned into a one-on-one -on -one win your battle offensive system right now. Razorbacks one of eight from the floor in the second half. Davis mid-range jumper. And a hold on the rebound. And take your pick. That'll be on Derek Fountain. That is his fourth. LSU has shown some life here in the second half. Mistakes helping Arkansas. Hold. Four to three losses and a couple of ties. I'm really looking forward to the ACC-SEC matchup. Be a little bit earlier in the season, right? I think it's going to be right after that Thanksgiving week. Yeah, the feast week is what I what I've been told. College football regular season will have wrapped up. Start to turn the attention to the hardwood. Marty, what would you learn in Eric Musselman's huddle? It's interesting. It was a very defensive-minded messaging, uh, Tom. He said, look, do your job. No threes, no straight line drives, defensive rebound well, and get back in transition quicker. He feels like they're failing on the defensive end even though they're not making a lot of shots right now. Yeah, he's right. Those straight line drives for LSU is what's giving them hope. Walsh into the clock, stolen away by Williams. And LSU grabs another possession. It all starts straight line drives with can you guard the dad gum ball. And that just becomes a point of pride and bad closeouts. LSU has attacked a few times already in the second half. Hannibal working on Mitchell. Steps through. And a rebound off of Williams and out of bounds. Hannibal took 12 two-point shots in the first matchup. And he continued to fight for that part of the floor. Good job by Mitchell. To move his feet, keep his hips squared. Yeah, he went 8 for 12 in that game. Finished with 19 points. Council leads it short. LSU still very much into this in this thing thanks to Arkansas sloppiness on the offensive end. No field goals for Arkansas in the last what 645 of this game. Jimmy KJ Williams hasn't done anything this half. No. Stolen but, away. Good hands by Council, and he was held by Williams. They'll decide if that was intentional or not. They look at that rule differently in the NBA than in college. It's a third personal on Justice Williams. Arch foul, whether or not the Arkansas player had his feet in the, uh, Missouri player had his feet in the yeah. restricted area. No 
Council will go to the free throw line. The difference would be a possession in this scenario. It would be shots in the ball for Arkansas. Instead, Council gets his two shots. I, I have no, one no, no issue at all with Eric Musselman arguing for that call. This is an Arkansas team that as of today, Joe Lenardi has pegged as an eight seed in the NCAA tournament. Remember, they've been to back-to-back -back elite eights. Mitchell had it stripped away by Adam Miller. And Tom, the second half turnovers by Arkansas are alarming. I think that's the seventh. Here's Miller from deep. Long rebound by Davis. And Davis gallops right through the LSU defense. I read somewhere in basketball 101 it says you take a bad shot you're going to give up one on the very next possession it's a horrible shot by miller and arkansas makes him pick williams are leading score one of the best in the league hasn't made a bucket this half that time black challenged him williams gets it back without having to leave his feet and he banks it in williams is a very good below the rim rebound he's not a real explosive athlete Kind of carves out space like Sheboy does for Kentucky, who's always Walsh all alone in an air ball from the corner. And that's a turnover shot is all that is. Williams, nice touch, and a finish by Trey Hannibal. Tom, same thing. I mean, that's a turnover shot by Walsh, a quick one that doesn't draw iron, and the life is back in the LSU Tigers. Seven real turnovers in the half in this half and just two for 12. Shrink UConn will be on Rocky Top. A college game day will be there. Tipping off our coverage at 7 Eastern. Then it's a rivalry that elevated women's basketball to the national stage in the 90s. You see the fierce look from Kara Lawson in that clip? Man. Tom, I spent probably 15 years ago covering the WNBA playoffs. Wow, Watch Mitchell with the slip and roll. And Pat Summit was on my crew. Man, we talked a lot of ball for about seven days. I've never been around a more competitive person in my life than what Pat Summit was as the head coach of Tennessee. Thirteen point lead for Arkansas. That was just their third make this half. Williams working on Mitchell. He loves the jump hook, but he leaves it short again. The game that Arkansas at one point led by 25. Arkansas has had some success screening the top of that zone and diving out of it. Wow, wild shot. Crazy shot. Second possession in the last few minutes. I'm not sure what Council saw or what he thought he saw. And off for Williams. Arkansas really packing it in. Hannibal trying to penetrate. And a shot clock violation, an LSU turnover. Arkansas locked him down. Coming out of the last time out, though, Tom, Arkansas was really good, that middle ball screen. They kind of screened the screener. Inflatable. <laughs> Woo pig suey. And uh, he got a little too excited. And my backpack, uh, you can't really tell it, but my backpack right straps are <laughs> covered and saturated with coffee, so I won't be wearing that out of here. But... I do want to just say thank you so much to the Arkansas operations staff because they were quick with reams and reams of paper towels to help dry me off in the blizzard as we have a big shot from the Hogs right on cue. I, you know what? I bet Boss Hog is really excited right now. The good news, Marty, is that once you take your backpack outside, it'll be ice coffee, so you're fine. There he is. Look there at you. That, that's look how look at him. He is smiling. He He's is so, so thrilled. He doesn't even blink. Yeah, I'm gonna sell him. My, I'm gonna have to go get a new iPhone. And the bill's going to you, buddy. <laughs> this text message that I got from the great Bob Delaney, I cannot read because it is swimming Marty, in. Marty, you need to settle this at the next TV timeout. As only a man in a we need to do, do an Oklahoma <laughs> drill. Mid -court. We the need Oklahoma to do an Oklahoma drill. drill. Me and you, buddy. Me and you, right there with that smirk on your face. Let's get what, it on. You're going to have to do the Oklahoma drill because you're 
never win a staring contest. What he doesn't know is that he's messing with Uncle Rico. <laughs> yeah. He knows he's wrong. You know when your dog, you know when your dog poops you, in the floor? Did you put him in timeout? And it hides? Yeah. There you go. That's what he's, Boss Hog <laughs> is, is in timeout right now. <laughs> Williams with another miss at the free throw line. It will be Arkansas basketball. That is a look of extreme guilt. Yep. I thought he was just really excited that Marty Smith was in town. LSU needs back-to-back -back stops and back-to-back -back makes to continue to put some game pressure on Arkansas. Arkansas with seven turnovers in the second half. Has kept the door open for LSU in this one. Show your hands inside that zone if you're Arkansas. Black left his feet. Able to find Davis right behind the back to him. Pretty close. Pass, huh? That stroke for Anthony Black. I know 19% from three coming in in conference play. Man, does it look good tonight. And the feel for Davis as a passer, special. Fountain crashing oh. the glass hard. And that'll be a foul on Kamani Johnson. And a late, a late clock shot by Arkansas was a huge one. That ball goes along that baseline to try to find the far corner. Black almost steps out of bounds. But the fast pass to Davis, and watch right here. Really good recognition after Black gave it up to sprint to the corner and get his feet set. And knocks down a huge triple. The scoring play for LSU. Anytime they line up 1 4, they are looking to score off baseline out of bounds under. Williams with five. Try to step through. Rejected by Makai Mitchell. Mitchell has been really good as a switch out five guy in this game, deleting the drive. He's had to play a lot of minutes. His twin, Mikhail Mitchell, injured his knee towards the tail end of their last game against Ole Miss. Not available tonight. But now he's a screener up top, just diving out of it. Let's Black turn the corner. A little strong off the glass, but got his own miss. Lob, Bam. finish! So loud in here, you can't even hear Boss Hog spill a coffee. Back to Williams. LSU trying to answer with a lob of its own. Davis blew it up. Out to Miller. Anthony Black, 6'7", point guard with the rebound. And we got a foul on the other end. Graham got tied up with Fountain, and that should be the fifth on Derek Fountain. On the last two Arkansas baskets, push this lead out to 19. And there's what I'm talking about with Black. He gives up the ball and then sprints. And that's just an understanding of how to play the game. You see that far corner open, don't pass and stand. And in the very next possession, I'm going to find the backside behind the zone. Council, eye contact with Graham. Really well done. Correction, that last foul wasn't on Fountain, though. He'll exit the game for the time being. It was on Adam Miller in his first. This is Jalen Graham, Arizona State transfer. Missed the front end. A.J. I, Williams tracks it down. I'm just, I've been in this building a lot. Marty's the first guy to come in here and irritate Boss Hall. Lob, finishing in! The Mitchell climbs the ladder. Boss Hogg's loving it. I would love one time to be inside that Boss Hog suit. That could be arranged. And that's a bucket list waiting to happen. Miller, no. Hannibal with the bucket. Tom LSU has competed much harder in this half. Yep. Which Matt McMahon, he's all about winning games. When you're first-year head coach, that compete, discipline, talk, all those things that are non-negotiable with him, he has seen some growth from his guys. 
the second half here in Fayetteville. Council, they're going to do it again. Just continue to ball screen and naked roll with an empty corner and hammer at the rim. Reed keeps it on the deck, and Graham fouled him. He'll count it. We've got drama at Bud Walton Arena, Arkansas trying to turn it up. Meanwhile, a real rivalry. Boss Hog doesn't know what he's dealing with. That's number nine. Next down to tennis, Seth can be relied on for pickleball. And Marty's looking for a bucket of rice that he can put his phone in to dry that bad boy out. I just made amends with Boss Hog. That's wise decision on your part. Yeah, Boss Hog came over here and I could totally sense the remorse that Boss Hog had for getting so excited and completely. I mean, it was a, my, my desk is a yard sale right now. How could you sense the remorse? Uh, well, he can't talk and he, he never Boss changes Hogg his facial out, expression. Boss Hog stuck out his hand a hug. and he asked me uh, to shake my hand and give me a hug. And then when I tried to give him a hug, uh, he's so round money. Oh, he's so round that I couldn't really give him a hug. So we went with the handshake instead, and he kind of shrugged. He gave it up. He knows he's in the wrong here. <laughs> he's probably the best low post scorer out of all the mascots in the SEC. Yeah, there's and, a whole lot of width the there. Those tusks are pretty intimidating, too. Mm -hmm. What do you like think it what? smells like in there? Yeah. I don't know, but they keep for breeze in business, that's for sure. Tom, I like what I've seen out of Arkansas tonight. The second half wasn't real clean. Man, the first half, they were dynamic. It all starts with Devo Davis on the defensive end. It has the ability to lock down Adam Miller early. And Arkansas is starting to find their identity on the glass defensively. They've got enough offensive weapons to finish in the top three or four in this league. Speaking of offensive weapons, we'll see some great, one out of, great ones out of the Big 12 this weekend and the SEC Big 12 Challenge because there's some real talent lurking on that other side. Absolutely there is. But those are meaningful games. The overall who wins the challenge doesn't factor in at all. Those are all head-to-head -head games that we'll all be looking at by that selection committee. But I talked about the special talent out of the SEC. The Big 12's got some dudes as well. Jalen Wilson for Kansas. I know they lost last night. Behind Zach Eady, he's right there, the National Player of the Year race, in my opinion. Mike, Mike Miles from TCU, if you haven't seen that guard. Dynamic, small guard with big game, man. He's, he is tremendous. And our guy, Keontae Johnson, the transfer from Florida, who has found a new home in a great way in Manhattan, Kansas, leads Kansas State right now. I think Keontae Johnson is the story of the year in college basketball. Absolutely. Not just Kansas State in the top five for the first time since Jacob Pullman was in the backcourt, Frank Martin was their head coach. Brad Underwood was on that staff. But for Keontae Johnson getting a new lease on his basketball life after coming over from Florida and have to sit out a couple of years. Yeah, Jerome Tang right there at the top right now in the National Player of the Year race. Just a game, loaded games all day long Saturday. And it finishes with a couple of blockbusters with Tennessee playing host to Texas on Rocky Scotty, Top. Scotty, you want me to get Muss after favorite, we get... Uh, former school, and then Kansas goes on the road carrying a three-game losing streak to take on Kentucky. The last national champion, by the way, to drop five games in a row was Larry Brown's Kansas team after Danny and the Miracles won it in 88. They lost five straight that next year. And they got three top 15 opponents waiting after their trip to run. Well, Kansas has to start making the three ball. You look at their in the losing streak right now. In that 27, 28 percentile from the three point, they rely so heavily on it. A couple of blocks inside after that one. Fantastic second half for LSU. They played well in the second half in the race. Last time, they will most likely outscore Arkansas in the second half, but the Razorbacks. Built a 38 to 14 lead in the first half. Arkansas will have back-to-back -back wins for the first time since before their long losing streak. How many will be back on track? And the offensive 
issues for LSU continue. They came in only averaging 59 points a game in conference play. They can be held to 40 or 42 in this one. There's not a lot of answers right now for Matt McMahon on the offensive end. They credit Arkansas's defense tonight. And I want to say it again, the fan base in Arkansas, not, not surprised at all. Five or six inches of snow expected to be falling right now. Class was canceled at 5 o'clock. The bus is shut down on campus. And what does Razorback Nation do? They rock Bud Walton tonight. That's not the only great moment tonight. Danielle Musselman is an award from the American Cancer Society for all that she does. What a fantastic honor. Coaches versus cancer continuing. The coaches wearing sneakers on the sideline. And that's the reason for the pink uniforms tonight. And this color versus color matchup ends up with a 20 point Arkansas win. Dominated the first half at Arkansas. And it all starts with four in pink. Who sets the tone. And now Eric Musselman is going to thank the crowd. You know he will before he goes and gets his sled dog to take him home.